Ray just described to you what is the magic, uh, the marvels that he's achieving. We're going to try and share, using uh, leveraging Amelia, we're going to try and share the advancements in insurance-related, um, verticalized, knowing the customer, the personalization, the advancements and the breakthroughs that have been made in the supporting cognitive solutions, uh, the cognitive technology, Amelia. And Josh Schechter, our head of global solutions, is going to lead that. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. So I, I want to focus today a little bit what's coming out of the labs at Amelia, and there's some really exciting things happening. Um, first of all, we have a lot of things coming out from the verticalization. So as Chayton just mentioned, and our DXC friends are here, we're learning from the subject matter experts in each of the verticals um, how to deliver really great customer experiences. And with that, we're able to actually now create templates so that when you purchase Amelia or when you install Amelia, you can choose which template you want to start with. And you can actually get it preloaded with not just processes and things like that, but the foundation of Amelia, which is her natural language understanding and processing, which anyone who's implemented Amelia always knows that that's usually the biggest hurdle to get over, is how well can Amelia understand what the user is saying. That's the foundation to all conversational AI. So with these advancements, we're able to actually start to preload and choose different templates for your different verticals and industries. Now, this is just one step. In addition, what's coming out of the labs, and you can see on the left, on the left, right, right, left, you can see over here uh, just some of the sample use cases that you would get out of the box and things like that. But uh, obviously, there's a lot more under the hood. But these are some of the more common ones. Um, as well, as you can see in her conversation over here, we've added elements of personalization. So this is coming out of the labs as well. And we're working on this every day to improve it. And this is coming from almost every customer's needs, right? To be able to understand and anticipate why a customer is calling or why they're reaching out to you, to be able to be proactive. And not only that, but to understand, hey, I know that you called a week ago, or I know you called yesterday, or I know you called a few hours ago, or you reached out on a different channel. So being able to anticipate that and personalize the experience for each customer is also coming out of the labs now as well. And that's all built into the platform. Um, now, the coolest part about all this is uh, what, one of the advancements that we actually have released already, uh, but I don't think we got to show on what's next here, is the Digital Employee Builder, which if you wanted to add to this, right, what is the level of effort? What does it take? Who's doing that work? And I think a lot of what our focus has been has been to remove the burden from engineering, right? You don't need to have 100 developers coming in and building Amelia for you, but to bring it down to the business level so they can focus on the experience. Let the experience drive the technology, right? Focus on that customer experience, which is what we're seeing from all of our customers. Um, so I want to jump into that really quickly and kind of show you uh, what's happening on the digital employee builder part. So, Digital Employee Builder. This is our new Canvas designer for conversation designers, UX experts, business analysts, customer service reps, anyone on the business side. Someone can come in here, anybody can come in here and teach Amelia what to do in different scenarios. So if we take a scenario like, I don't know, one of the more popular insurance ones, we can say something like, you know, I want to add say, I want to add my son to my insurance policy. Great. So this is what a user is going to come in and ask Amelia to do. And then how can we train Amelia to handle this situation? So the first thing she does, she thinks a lot. But first thing she does is she's like, OK, you know what? You don't need to worry about this, but I just created an intent for you. This is the natural language processing. Now, from a design perspective, I'm not really too sure what's going on behind the scenes here, but I do know that she's creating a new intent for the model. She's even generating new utterances for me, training data. So 
So this was another challenge in the past that we've all had is where do we get this data from? Some companies have production data that they can give to us, right? But most companies, this is a new venture for them. They don't really have the production data that you would need. So we're using um, advanced technology here to generate new utterances for you. And you can even see her natural generation, natural language generation is coming up with a response for what this user wants to do. Now, this is just the beginning of it, right? So we still have to teach her what to do in this scenario. So I can say, let's say we assume we know who this user is and we can say, um, sure thing, or what is your son's name? Great. What's cool here is that Amelia knows that she's gonna be asking a question in this scenario. Not only that, she knows that this is an entity that we're looking for a person name. Why is this important? This is important because when it comes to intelligence, I can say, I wanna add my son, Charlie Schechter, to my insurance policy. Now I should probably skip this question, right? I shouldn't ask them what your son's name is anymore. So that's why it's important to be able to extract this information on the fly and do it really easily and quickly. Um, all that's controlled over here on the right-hand side by the behavior. So being able to say something like, hey, ignore this question if it's already responded, or we can even confirm. Hey, just want to confirm, is your son's name Charlie? Right, being able to do that as well. So all these experience control behaviors are all done over here on the right-hand side. Now, building this platform was a lot of fun. We worked with a lot of conversation designers, and one of the key things they wanted to do was be able to say, um, you know, can I test this on the fly? Can I run this before I deploy it anywhere? So can I do like something like, got it, I will add your son, and then we can do the son's name to your policy. So all I gotta do is hit this little save button and preview it in real time. Oh, real time, look at that but be able to kind of do this in real time and actually test it out as we go through the different processes. And this is really important as you start to build because if you think about the process here, the process is being able to design first, create the experience, test it out with the business and the users, and then actually spend the time and effort implementing it. All right. The last thing we got uh, coming out of the labs as well is the ability to import transcripts. Now this is really important as we shift the burden of Amelia from everyone having to teach her all the time. Hey Amelia, learn this, do this, do this, do this. Now she can actually learn from your existing transcripts. She can actually take in your, your, your existing chat transcripts, your uh, phone call recordings, and actually start to build out processes related to them. And she could do it singly, right? So we can have one file come in here and you can take one file and have her import that and learn from that single file, right? So you can do a one transcript or you can actually take this to the next level and you can say, hey, Amelia, here's a thousand transcripts from the last week. Can you tell me what's going on in my environment? Can you identify which processes people are asking about the most? And not only that, can you actually map it out? Can you actually build out the processes? Can you become intelligent around it? So you can see here, someone wants to buy a car, Toyota Highlander, 2021. And you can see she's able to read through that transcript and actually generate the full process flow for this. Now, when we take this to the next level, we can actually start to create from an environment where we have um, multiple transcripts, right? So I can take hundreds of transcripts, drop them in, let her actually learn from this. Right? This might take a few minutes, but uh, it's a good thing I did it a little earlier today for you. So we prepped it up a little bit, but you can see that I've uploaded 13 files, the same 13 files that are running right now. Um, she was able to process 12 of them. Okay, one of them failed. She lets me know which one failed, so at least I know which transcripts didn't work. And she was able to actually identify five intents from these, five skills, and build them out. Now she organizes them for me by volume. So the top ones are the higher volume ones. Those are the ones where I should be focusing my energy on. So what do these look like when we click on them? So buy a car, for example. We'll start off with files. You can see all, these are all the transcripts that she used to generate this. She extracts all the entities from the different flows. She even extracts all the intents. And she's able to build out your process flow. For example, decrease my interest rate. 
So here's one, again, four files, extracting all the entities, extracting intents, and then building out a flow. Now, let's not get too excited here as I do, but uh, there's something really cool happening here. So these four files were four completely different conversations. They were all regarding lowering an interest rate. Like the user came in and said, hey, I want to lower my interest rate. And of course, Amelia responded with something, or the agent responded with something, and the agent always asked the user, hey, which product do you have that you want to reduce your interest rate for? But after that, we get to a really cool place. Some agents authenticated users using social security number and date of birth, and some actually authenticated them with account number and last four of social. So now I can start seeing the merge, the match and merge, where all four conversations are now matching each other, and you can see where the breaks are, and you can also see where they come back together. So for example, after we authenticate the user, we all go to the same line of questioning again. Now we do see some little edges coming off, so some agents may have taken a different path at different scenarios, but at least now we're able to identify the happy paths, what our agents are doing right, and what our agents are maybe not doing, that may be suspicious, but you can kind of see the full experience of what's going on in your environment. And I think uh, with that, we'll conclude what's coming out of the labs today as there's a lot to digest here, but some really cool things coming out of the labs and we're really excited about it.